Hayden here with MyFreshPlans.com and I'm going to talk to you today about math manipulatives. Using manipulatives to teach math has some real advantages. Number one, it engages your students and lets them think about something other than math. Number two, it makes the concepts more concrete and therefore more clear. And number three, it allows the students to interact with the math both visually and kinesthetically. When you use edible manipulatives, it also takes advantage of taste and smell two of our learning modalities, and using novelty candies can take advantage of a student's excitement over the season. If you want to avoid sugar, you can always use holiday-shaped erasers or themed counters. I have some hedgehogs myself. But we feel that using fun things helps to make the experience more memorable and more likely to stay in their brain. Give students a handful of counters to work with. We'll be working with candy pumpkins today, although you can also use uh, chocolate-covered candies or peanuts, but be aware of allergies and then have them create patterns. You can either give them patterns to use from the board on a worksheet or just create their own. And here are three ways to use your manipulatives effectively. Use your manipulatives to create patterns. For instance, you can do one pumpkin and then a space, one pumpkin, space, pumpkin, space, and so on and so forth, which gives you an A-B pattern. So the pumpkins are A, the spaces are B. Another option is, of course, to use the ABC pattern. So you would have one pumpkin and a space, then two pumpkins and a space, one pumpkin, space, two pumpkins, so on and so forth, giving you an ABC pattern. Have your students recreate some examples and then create some examples of their own. You can pair your students up, having one create a pattern and the other student repl replicate that pattern and then have them switch roles. Number two. Place value. Manipulatives are a good way to get your mind around the idea of place value. If we all agree that 10 candies equal one cupcake, then we can represent the number 13 by using one cupcake and three candies. Number three, equations. We can move from counting and patterning to equations by grouping the elements of our equations and then using math symbols with them. You can use tiles or dice with math symbols, but you can also add them to cards or post-it notes. If you'd like, you can also do a worksheet and have them place the manipulatives on top of each number. For instance, if you have the equation 3 plus 4 equals 7, you would have them take 3 candies, place it on top of the number 3, and then 4 candies, place that on top of the number 4. They can then count 3 and count the 4 equals Seven. Having manipulatives represent a number, whether it is 10 in the case of our cupcakes or 1 in the case of each individual pumpkin candy, makes the concepts much more concrete for your students and easier for them to remember.